In today's episode of Solved Mysteries, we're going to be observing a very creepy case from early 1940s known as the Denver Spider-Man. Not to be confused with the superhero that we all know and love, this case centers around a paranoid question, is there someone inside my house? So, who exactly is the Denver Spider-Man? Where did he come from? Also, what did he exactly do that made him a topic for today's video? These are questions that we will be answering as we dive deep into the clues of this case. Let's get into this case now. Born on November 10, 1882, in Petersburg, Illinois, Theodore Connies was brought into this world by T.H. Connies, who was a Canadian immigrant that owned a hardware store in Petersburg, and his fellow wife. After his father died in 1888, Miss Connies and her son moved to a farm near Beloit, Wisconsin, then to Denver, Colorado in 1907, where she worked as a housekeeper at the Denver Democratic Club, but she eventually passed away in 1911. But to give more background information on Theodore, he suffered from poor health and he had been told by doctors not to expect to see his 18th birthday, so he did not finish high school. As an adult, he worked as a bookkeeper at the Denver Brass Works and in advertising and sales, yet spent much of his adult life homeless. And because of such poor living conditions, Theodore was treated badly by others for his frail condition and later expressed resentment and desire to move to a place where he could be alone and free from judgment of others. In September 1941, 59-year-old Theodore Connies intended to ask former acquaintance Philip Peters for a handout at his home on 3335 West Moncrief Place in Denver, Colorado. Connies broke into the house in Peters' absence to steal food and money. In the ceiling of a closet, Connies found a small trap door that led to a narrow attic cubbyhole and decided to occupy the small space without Peters' knowledge. Connies lived in the house undiscovered for about five weeks, and for those five weeks, Peters had been staying in his house alone because his wife Helen was recovering at St. Anthony's Hospital after breaking her hip in a fall. His neighbors opened their homes to him in the evenings so that he wouldn't have to be alone at dinner time, and so he could enjoy hot, home-cooked meals and leftovers to take for his lunch the next day. However, on the night of October 17, 1941, Peters eventually discovered Connie's in a refrigerator, so Peters struck that Connie's with the cane he carried, but Connie's clubbed him with an old pistol he had found in the house. After the gun broke apart, Connie's continued the battery with a heavy iron stove shaker and bludgeoned the 73-year-old Peters to death. Connie's then returned to the attic cubbyhole. Peters' body was discovered later the same day after a neighbor concerned Peters had not come by for dinner called the police. The police found all of the home's doors and windows locked and there was no other sign of forced entry. They noted the trap door but believed a normal sized person could not fit through it. Peter's wife, Helen, who had been in the hospital recuperating from a broken hip during and prior to Connie's occupation of the attic, returned to live in the house with a housekeeper. In the months following Miss Peter's return, she and her housekeeper reported strange things happening around the West Moncrief Place house. Food was missing strange sounds, and things out of place. The housekeeper was convinced that the house was haunted and resigned, while Miss Peters decided to relocate to Grand Junction to live with her son. So the house stood vacant, and the strange sounds and disgusting smells continued to be reported to the police, but they couldn't find anyone in the house. Connie's remained in the vacant house with the occasional signs of his occupation written off as an apparition or local pranksters. Police continued to make routine checks when on July 30, 1942, one of them heard a lock click on the second floor. Running upstairs, the police caught the sight of Connie's legs as he was going through the trap door and pulled him down. He was taken into police custody and confessed to the crime. Connie's insisted to the police that beating Peters had been a split second decision. After he had killed Peters, Connie's sought refuge up in the attic where he stayed until July. Denver police sent their smallest officer up into the cramped attic where Connie's had made himself a nest of sorts. He had collected his waste and had not bathed during his attic residency and the stench ended up making the officer vomit. After recovering from losing his lunch, Officer Fred Zarnow said of the attic, quote, A man would have to be a spider to stand it long up there. End quote. The newspaper heard this and ran with it. 
Theodore Connies was dubbed, quote, the Denver Spider-Man, end quote, and a legend was born. Connies was charged and convicted of murder by a jury and sentenced to life in prison in October of 1942. He was sent to the state penitentiary in Cannon City and remained there until his death on May 16, 1967, at the age of 84. He was then finally buried at the Mountain Vale Cemetery in Cannon City. Overall, the case of Theodore Connies is quite creepy, but at the same time, a sad tragedy. You never know who might be living in your household when you leave your home vacant, but thanks to modern technology like security cameras, homeowners and tenants can now live more freely with less concerns. But there's no such thing as being too careful with security, as dwellers like Theodore Connies can possibly find loopholes into breaking into your homes. Although the situation with Connies and Peters was truly tragic, the Denver authorities were luckily able to find their man responsible and bring this case to rest. Hence why, can declare this case to be solved. Hey guys and gals, this is Mr. Shin Ramen, and I just want to thank you for making it this far. Did you enjoy the video? If so, it would be greatly appreciated if you can leave a like on this video and subscribe to this channel for more future content. Till next time, stay safe and stay scared.